Okay, so take about two fathom nib of sand twine. This, um, of course, depends on the, the two lengths of line that you're seizing together, so you kind of have to gauge the uh, the amount you're going to need. But generally, for, <clears throat> for most line, it ends up being about two fathoms. You eye splice the end of it. Um, this is not the only way to do it. Um, I've seen various other ways, but this is a pretty standard way. You'll find it in the, the Marlin Spike Sailor, which is an excellent book if anyone's interested. So you hitch the eye splice through both of the legs that you're going to seize. And ideally, if at all possible when you're doing the seizing, um, you want to set your seizing up, your two lines that you're going to be seizing, you want to set them up as tight as possible. So if there's a situation where you're seizing a tail or something, and you can put tension on both of the lines and bring them close to each other, you're going to achieve a much better seizing that way. Um, if you're just trying to seize two loose lines on deck, it becomes a lot more difficult. Um, so you also want to make sure that your two lines are sitting nice and flat next to each other. Um, if you just start wrenching on your seizing with your marlin spikes, sometimes they'll cock to the side like this. You got to work them back into place continually. So you want them nice and flat. You want the eye of the eye splice right in between the two legs of the seizing. And then you're going to lay each turn upwards from the next one, from the first one. And each turn is going to be marlin spike tight. So you're going to hold the strands so that they don't collapse run sideways and you may need to adjust the eye splice back if you pull it too far you could even bring the camera a little closer yeah I pull it back through the eye Bruce and then each turn you're gonna hold the tension with your thumb the key is to not lose any tension at all while you do this so I'm holding the tension with my one hand on the sand twine each turn spike tight. Same thing, make sure they're sitting flat right next to each other. You want to make the seizing roughly as tall as the overall diameter of the two lines that you're seizing together. So, <clears throat> your seizing should be roughly square. It shouldn't be very long. And if you're using the right diameter twine, this is going to give you enough force to hold pretty much any, <clears throat> any amount of force on the line. And with the right tension, you're actually compressing the lays of the line. So much like a serving, um, where you can see the lay of the line through the serving. You do a seizing right and you should see the outline of the lay of the line within your seizing. So once you've built your seizing up high enough, and you determine it's about the right height. Your last turn upwards like this is going to be a half hitch. Half hitch around both lines. Half hitch around both lines. Make sure that it's worked down before you pull it tight so there's no gaps. So then you're going to spike tight that as well. Always be working it down, especially if it's riding up. So you shouldn't be able to flex any of these turns by pushing on them with your fingers. They shouldn't bend inward at all. It should be nice and tight. Second set of turns on a regular round seizing goes downwards and are hand tight so that you don't pull apart <clears throat> the first set of turns with your Marlin Spike. So these are called covering turns, and you want them to lie right close to each other. Um, if they're tending to slide down a little bit, 
Um, what you can do is actually twist the sand twine and lay it up in the direction that it's laid, which should, should be clockwise, and that actually makes it want to sit upwards in the little slot that's created by the other strands. So you wind your way all the way back down to the eye splice. Once you hit the eye splice, you want to open it up a little bit with your marlin spike. Make sure you can get the line through there. Sometimes this can be frustrating. If the splice is super small, if the eye is super small, you can put a same twine puller through there. It makes it a little easier. So at this point, you're down through the eye, bring the strand up through the crotch of these two top strands lines you're seizing, you're going to work it down into the crotch. When it's sitting right down on top of the seizing, and at this point when you have your <coughs> half of your riding turn, you're going to stick a sand twine puller <coughs> under your first turn with the direction of the pull being out into the left. Stick that under there and tighten this back up. Same thing when you bring it under the, under the bottom, spike tight it. Get your second puller ready. So you're going to bring a Second riding turnover. Your second, sorry, your first puller is going to be pulling to the left and out between the two strands. The first puller should be pulling from the center between the two strands out and to the left. So once both your pullers are in, same thing, spike tight it. Shouldn't have any play in the riding turns. So then, once you get to the finishing point here where you're going to make the knot, put your tail up through the first puller in line, and you're going to pull it out and to the left. That pulls it between the two. That pulls it from between the two, out and to the left. And then this is the important part here, because if you, if you do this the wrong way, it doesn't make the correct knot. The tail goes through the second puller, but the tail of this puller needs to come out underneath the bite of line, this bite of line here. If it goes on top, it doesn't create the same knot. So you want to take as much slack out of the same twine as you can. Put your spike through and pull it down. This creates what's called a flat knot. And this is straight out of the Marlin Spike Sailor. It's pretty standard. Like I said, it isn't the only way to do it. Some people, some bosons are going to have you half hitch your riding turns. There are different ways. They aren't wrong, they're just different. But this is the way that I was taught by multiple bosons. So, as you cinch this down into the crotch, you should be able, be able to almost make it disappear and it will cinch these riding turns until they're super tight should be like a rock basically and then how I like to finish this yet again there's different ways to finish it but a um, simple way to finish it is <clears throat> you make an overhand knot and you pinch the standing end of the overhand knot or put your finger right next to it cinch this up so you can get the overhand knot right close and then you're going to turn the overhand knot and you just work it into place until it's sitting right up next to your flat knot. Once you work that tight, you can snip it off. So 
So once you do that with nylon sand twine, you should really burn it. It's synthetic, it's pretty slippery, and while the seizing may be extremely tight, this might unlay over time. Of course, with natural fiber, it's not necessary to do this, and you can't do it. And I melt it right up to the overhand knot. And then flatten it off. So that's your round seizing.